Alright, so today we're going to be doing a review of a Bulova automatic watch and we'll be talking a wee bit about watches in general, the interior bits, what makes them go. Uh, like I said, this one is an automatic and we'll talk a wee bit about that later. Uh, so there's the box there. I think these are a fairly good deal in terms of well-made non-quartz watches. Uh, so I just want to talk a wee bit about that today. So there's the box, obviously very nice. Uh, there we go, that. Open the bottom bit there. And there's a wee instruction manual inside. Oh, there it is. Uh, whatever the warranty, all that. This comes with a three year warranty. There on the lid, you can see the Bulova logo, which is a tuning fork, in case you didn't know what that was. And then we'll go ahead and take that out of there. And we'll take it off the pillow. As you can see, I think this is this is quite a handsome watch. You know, it's not overdone. Um, and one of the reasons why uh, I think this is a good choice comes with a leather strap, and these can be these can be had for about uh, two hundred dollars on sale, and maybe two fifty, maybe three hundred around there. And they change these every season, so um, you probably won't be able to get this exact one. They change the the colors or the dials a little bit um, every season for whatever reason to keep the stock uh, going there. Uh, but I think it's quite a handsome watch, actually, if we undo the strap there. This is uh, waterproof, I believe, to... Uh, I don't know how many meters, but something. Now, it has a leather strap, so obviously your mileage uh, may vary on that. Um, and you can see it's quite... Let's see if we can get that to focus there. That's quite nice. And you can see the... Uh, we have a skeleton window on the front, and then it's also skeleton on the back, if you can see that. We'll zoom in a wee bit here. On the back. Now, we'll talk about this for a minute. So Bulova, actually a fun little history of them, they were the first company ever to advertise on telly. The very first television ad, I believe was in 1941, uh, was a Bulova ad. And Bulova is actually uh, an American company. Uh, a lot of people think they're Swiss. They did merge with a Swiss company um, a certain point, but originally they were American. Um, like I said, a lot of people think they're Swiss, uh, and they gave it this name, I think, because it sounded more <laughs> European. Now, Bulova was also uh, purchased by a uh, Japanese company, um, Citizen, about 15 years ago. So these are actually quite quality made now. They, they tend to last. Um, and if we look on the side there, you can see the Bulova logo is on the crown. And then if we look at the back here closely, let's see if we can see that there. Uh, we'll go ahead and pull this off. Uh, what does it say in the middle there? It's hard to see. Pull the plastic off. Uh, what does it say there? It says 21 joules. And then somewhere down here, stainless steel. Where does it say? Water resistant. Where is it? It says, uh, you can barely see it in the middle, but it says made in Japan. So anything, as you know, made in Japan is, is, uh, is quite quality, and these are known to last. And then the, uh, the strap is leather, like I said there, uh, quite nice. Now, this is an automatic watch, which, let's see if I can show you how this works real quickly here. If you don't know what an automatic watch is, basically, when watches were first introduced, um, you know, hundreds of years ago, <laughs> uh, they were very expensive, obviously a lot of complicated bits, but you had to wind them manually okay and that was the oldest kind of watch and I, I actually have one put that down there for a second this is the only manual wind watch I have I know I get, I get a good laugh out of that it is a it is a Mao watch I, I picked this up when I was in China uh, you can see on the back um, the Chinese lettering but this is actually this is a non quartz watch that is also not automatic it's a manual wind only like all good communists uh, <laughs> a nice mechanical movement you don't need any of that uh, you know that that Western decadent automatic winding thing. Uh, ma nice manual wind, you know, put your, put your effort into it. And just to show you how this works, so if we shake it, we can see it doesn't tick. So this is, this is a manual wind watch, like the very first kind. If we turn it, and it, okay. Okay, there it goes, it starts ticking. So this is a true non-quartz mechanical watch. Because it is uh, obviously a, you know, a bit of a, a communist piece there, they like manual wind, so that's, that's how they got that. Now, if we go back to this, the modern type, this is automatic. So you can wind this 
Or, if you see on the back here, this is a counterweight. As you walk, this spins around and actually winds the mechanism of the watch. And if you look through the, uh, the front there, this little skeleton window on the front, that is the balance wheel, which I'll show you in a second. Um, oh, well, I guess we'll show you how this works. So if we shake this, we can see it started ticking. You see that? And that is basically how an automatic watch works. As you walk, it winds up the mechanism and starts ticking. And this part that moves back and forth in the front, this is called a balance wheel. And basically it's weighted so that it spins at always the same speed. And here's a fun fact. The most famous balance wheel, if you've ever heard the phrase balls to the wall, if you've ever heard that, that is actually a uh, reference to a balance wheel in a locomotive. In a locomotive, there's a, there's a mechanism, it's like, it's like a triangle like this, and uh, it has weighted balls at the bottom, and as it goes up, it pushes a mechanism down and limits the amount of steam or pressure, or whatever, as it moves. So a balls to the wall, that reference is actually to a steam engine running at full speed, because the balls, as they spin around the axis, they go higher. Uh, they go farther out in their, in their mechanism, and that's the origin of the phrase balls to the wall. And this uh, is the same principle on the balance wheel here. Um, as you can see, it, uh, it ticks back and forth, it's weighted. Uh, so basically like a, like a pendulum in a grandfather clock, that keeps that going. Now, these can also be manually winded uh, by turning the crown when it is all the way pushed in. And you can feel a little resistance on there uh, as that works. Um, if you don't wear it every day, you can, you can turn the, uh, the crown to get, it, to get it wound, which is kind of nice. Most automatic watches have this. And I'll just to show you there, so the numbers aren't covered. Uh, there we go. And see, so you can see there the uh, the name automatic twenty one jewels. Now, if you're wondering why they're called jewels, I can answer that question too. So the bearings in a mechanical watch movement. So they found out all the points in the center of the gears when they were first building these back in the day they found out that they would wear out quite quickly because you can't put metal on metal directly without you know some sort of a gasket and so as the as the mechanisms would turn they would wear out the little holes in the metal and so what they did is they found out that they could actually use uh, um, naturally mined precious gems as the bedding so essentially there's little rubies and sapphires in there uh, that are all synthet synthetically made on the, on the new watches. But originally they were real rubies and sapphires. And they use those as the bearings in the mechanism. So if you can see right in there, you see that one's red? That's a synthetic ruby. Is the bedding mechanism for the uh, counterweight wheel. And we can see a couple other red dots there and there. Uh, as we go around, some more red dots. And that is why it's called 21 Jewel, and that's why they use jewels in watches, because the, um, the natural stones are very hard, and they wear, they wear very well. And so you could use them as beddings, and the watch would last longer. Now, there is an alternative. There's a strange little tidbit in history. This is a Seiko uh, watch, and they did this for a while. I think they still do it. They have something that's kind of like automatic, but it's electronic. So if we look at the back of the Seiko here, you can see there's a, there's a counterweight, just like the true mechanical automatic Bulova. Counterweight back and forth. However, there's no gears on this one. You see, where are the gears in there? They're not there. You can see a little, you can see a little coiled winding in there. You see that? So basically this has the same principle as the automatic, except as this turns, it basically runs a wee generator and goes into a capacitor and all that uh, to power the watch electronically in the same way that an automatic watch works. So this is kind of a, it's a strange anomaly, a hybrid electronic uh, mechanical sort of thing. And I believe Seiko is the only company that does this. And uh, we'll see if we, if we shake this. You can see, uh, is it gonna focus? You can see that one started ticking, see that? Of course, I haven't, I haven't worn this watch in a long time, so <laughs> it, needs, it needs a wee bit more power. So there, this is called a kinetic watch. Same principle as the true automatic, but with an electronic component. The problem with these is that the little capacitor actually wears out like a battery in a normal watch, and so that kind of um, 
a wee bit defeats the purpose of these, I think. And now if we go uh, way down to the, here we'll, we'll, bring, uh, we'll bring Mao back in there. If we go way down to the, the bottom of the run, if you ever get a watch like this, look at that. This says Armani on it, but basically it's just a licensing fee to pay for this. A watch that says quartz basically is junk. I mean, to be honest with you, if it's quartz, it's junk. Um, it means that even if it has a brand name on it or a nice cover, it's basically just a style piece with no mechanical elements if it's quartz. Um, and if we look on the back of a quartz watch, you can see that looks uh, quite uh, chintzy in there. <laughs> and there's a, there's a wee battery. Um, and of course, these will be the cheapest watches you can get in the store. These will be the, the $10 ones, are battery-powered quartz. So never pay a lot of money for a quartz watch. That would be my statement. No matter how nice it looks, ultimately, it's just a cheap battery-powered watch. I mean, <laughs> if, we're going, if we're going to be honest. I mean, this watch is pretty and everything, but uh, it's cheap and it stopped working when the, when the battery died. Um, Although I must say it is, it is quite handsome, this, this one here. But like I said, this is a quartz watch. They use batteries. Um, the reason they're called quartz is the, the quartz crystal, they actually discovered they could use it as an oscillator. Because even in electronic watches, you still need something to time it. It's hard to explain. Even computers have uh, oscillators in them to keep the internal clocks working, because electronics still don't have a sense of time, it's hard to explain. And that's why they're called quartz, and quartz watches are all electronic. So, uh, basically, if it says quartz, uh, don't spend more than, you know, $50 on that, you know, even if it's designer, or $20 if it's not designer, $10. Quartz, no good. Uh, stick, to, stick to the good ones here. Uh, so back to this, <laughs> we have the Mal watch, he's waving at you, true mechanical. You, you can't buy these too much anymore, I'd say. Um, if you get any quality watch, it's probably going to be automatic. Uh, all the, the Rolex, Omega, stuff like that. Um, if they have a quality movement, uh, it's going to be automatic. They very rarely do the ones that are manually uh, wound. I'd say the, the exception might be Patek Philippe, the very low-end ones. I believe they're still manual wind. Um, that's just a wee history of how that works. So that's the manual wind. There's the kinetic or automatic electronic wound one called kinetic. Um, I believe they still sell these as a, as a Seiko thing. And then back to the true, the true class of watch, the uh, the mechanical automatic movement. If you're going to get a watch, you may as well do this. I mean, if if you want to get a quartz watch or something electronic, just get a smart watch like an Apple Watch. You don't. You need to appreciate the mechanism, I think, these days. The mechanism is what makes it so bloody cool. Um, and I love the skeleton on the front. You know, I would say don't buy one unless it has that. You get a lot of questions about it. Um, and back to the Seiko watch, I'd say it's quite fetching. Uh, like I said, these, uh, or not Seiko, Bulova. Uh, it's quite fetching. The Bulova watches, they have kind of an understated elegance. And because they are Japanese-owned now, uh, they're quite quality. Uh, generally, and I guess we can try that on my wrist there. Let's see how fetching that looks. Oh, look at that. Oh, what time it is. Oh, look at that. 15 to 4. I think that's a good time for a martini. <laughs> so this has been a review of the Bulova automatic watch, as well as a quick talk about what exactly makes a watch automatic, electronic, quartz, manual, mechanical, all that. Just a wee bit of info on that. And I'd say if you are getting a, a timepiece, the Bulova, I think, is a, is a good price point on this for a, you know, a quality movement that'll last and, uh, and gives you the, the mechanical element that I think is so cool these days. You know, it's almost, it's funny to think about it, this was, when this sorts of idea came out, it was super high tech. You know, this is, predates the Industrial Revolution, you know, this is high tech, the idea of having a little, a little gizmo on your arm with all these wheels that turned and stuff. Uh, and nowadays, you know, it's like it's almost like a steampunk type aesthetic on it, because we live in a in a very digital electronic world. Um, even our cars are computer controlled, you know. They're and the new, and the new cars, you know, they're electric. They they don't like go karts. We don't have an opportunity, I think, to to appreciate what used to go in to a very well engineered item. You know, it's something that perhaps people won't appreciate anymore. Um, and this is why I think it's important to keep these. You know, mechanical skeleton back watches. Um, you know, in in rotation. You know, if you have a 
you know, if you have a, a kid or something, you want to get them a nice, a nice watch as a gift, you know, this would be a good thing to do to really give them an appreciation for engineering, for, you know, precision manufactured things, something we don't see anymore because everything's cheap plastic. And, uh, and they most likely would have never seen anything like this before, get a, get a good kick out of it. So there you go. There is a wee quick review of the Bulova Automatic 21 Jewel watch.